In this next section, we're going to talk about the National Institute of Justice, also known as the NIJ, which is the governing authority on body armor. They set the standards and testing protocols on how body armor is tested in the different levels. We're going to talk about the key terms used in body armor testing, and then we're going to explain the various levels within the NIJ body armor protocols. The NIJ provides guidance for body armor. It sets the minimum performance standards and also lays out the testing protocols for body armor. The current NIJ standard is 0101.06, and you can refer to this as the ballistic resistance of body armor. It was published in 2008. There is a new version of the NIJ testing protocols, which is pending, but we're not certain when it's going to be released. It's also important to understand armor testing is voluntary. It's not required. If an armor package goes through the NIJ testing, it must be performed at an NIJ certified laboratory. The NIJ publishes a list of certified products, also known as the Compliant Products List, or CPL. So it's also important to make sure that your package is on the NIJ CPL list. Independently tested armor is not considered NIJ certified. Armor that's NIJ certified will clearly state so on the armor label. Don't be fooled by language such as it's been tested at an independent laboratory or tested via NIJ protocols or in compliance with. The label will clearly state it's NIJ certification and the package will be on the CPL list. Some key terms for ballistic data information are aerial density, or AD, which is simply the weight of a 12 inch by 12 inch swatch of the armor panel, back face signature, which is the greatest indentation into the ballistic clay caused by a non-perforating bullet, ballistic limit, also known as V50, which is the velocity at which the bullet is expected to perforate the armor 50% of the time, perforation, which is when a projectile passes through the armor, Standalone, in reference to rifle plates, is a hard armor plate designed to function independently of soft armor. In conjunction with is a combination of hard and soft armor panels designed to increase ballistic protection. Within conjunction armor, it's important to remember that the hard armor and the soft armor panels used in the testing through the NIJ must be together in order to achieve that level of performance. Single hit means the plate is tested to protect against a single round strike. Multi-hit or multi-strike means it's tested to protect against multiple strikes. So let's talk about NIJ testing. What do they do? How do they ensure that these products perform? There are several different factors that go into the NIJ testing. Number one is perforation. Obviously, we have to ensure that the bullet does not perforate the armor package. Number two is what's referred to as back face signature. As we explained earlier with soft armor, whenever a projectile strikes the soft armor package, it catches but then deforms in the direction of travel of the energy, which means into your body. The NIJ has set up what it refers to as passing or acceptable back face data, which is 44 millimeters or about 1.73 inches. Now this is important to ensure that your back face data is as low as possible because that directly translates to blunt force trauma to the human body. And then the third and final testing that they do is referred to sometimes as the V50 or ballistic limit. And essentially that just translates into the maximum amount of velocity, how fast they can push a bullet and the soft armor still stop and perform as expected to. In addition, soft armor is also tested for durability through an environmental testing. The soft armor is exposed to extreme heat, extreme cold, moisture. It's also tumbled in a specialized dryer to simulate usage over years and years. And finally, hard armor, as we referred to before, rifle plates are affixed to a pendulum and then dropped against a very hard surface in a very scientific controlled manner to ensure there's no cracking and that the plate will remain durable. The NIJ offers several different levels of armor protection. For soft armor protection, the standard levels are level 2 and 3A. The National Fire Protection Agency 3000 document for active shooter recommends a minimum of level 3A protection. The International Association of Firefighters also recommends a minimum of level 3A for active shooter or hostile events. Here at North American Rescue, we start with level 3A as the foundation of our soft armor products because it provides the maximum level of protection for the end user. 
It's going to protect you all the way from nine millimeter, which is the most common pistol round used in violence, all the way through 44 Magnum. The NAR Level 3A soft armor package has been additionally special threat tested for a variety of different handguns, including the nine millimeter SXT, 5.7, and fragmentation from two grain to 64 grain. NIJ level 3A provides the highest level of protection against a pistol threat. In order to protect against rifles, we have to move into hard or rigid plates, which are categorized as level three or level four via the NIJ. Level three hard armor is designed to stop the 5.62 by 51 millimeter or 308. Most but not all level three hard armor on the market will also stop standard 5.56 millimeter ball ammunition. The so-called level three plus rating is generally meant to address the 5.56 millimeter M855 round, commonly referred to as the green tip, which requires a steel or ceramic front face to prevent perforation. An NIJ level four plate is designed to stop against a true 30 caliber round or a 30 odd six round, which is very uncommon. The highest level of body armor, a level four, is often not the right answer. Body armor is a balance. It's a balance between weight, between comfort, between cost. If you can't do your job in the gear, it's the wrong gear. The data is not there to support routine wear of a level four plate. Because of that, a more balanced approach would be North American Rescue's level three plate that is also special threat tested for some of the more common threats. We spent a lot of time and a lot of prototyping and development to make sure that we were maximizing coverage, both front, laterally, that it had adjustability so that it's gonna fit 80% of the population the best versus older style rescue task force vests. And then more importantly, you can still do your job. Job duties and functions by paramedics and firefighters require a different set of movements than law enforcement. And so we had to adjust the profile of this vest to ensure that you can still do your job while staying protected. For more information on this and other premium products with a mission from North American Rescue, visit narescue.com. Follow us on social media or sign up for our newsletters to join the mission.